Hi there, this is not the UTF podcast. This is the UTF Extra. I don't know what we're going to call it. Yeah. Just an extra story because, um, I mean, it's worth talking about a big story this week. We didn't have time to, uh, to get to it in the podcast. I don't want to make it too long. Um, so, yeah, Leicester, um, if you haven't seen, I imagine you have. Um, Leicester City have sacked their manager, Mr. Claude Puel, on the board there. Uh, and it looks like they're close to uh, appointing their replacement, which at the moment looks to be Brendan Rodgers from Celtic. By the time this is out, Brendan Rodgers probably will be appointed. There was a number of people that said they were interested in, in the job. Sam Allardyce, David Moyes, uh, most people that are unemployed at the moment, to be honest. Um, Neil Lennon was one, and he looks to be Brendan Rodgers' replacement at Celtic. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to talk about this, you know, uh, because Leicester have had a difficult season, really. They had the horrible tragedy at the beginning of the season where their owner tragically died in a helicopter crash, um, as, as well as four other people on board. Um, so it's not been easy. It's not been easy. They've, uh, they've got a very talented squad. They've got a lot of money, a lot of young uh, youth players that are, that are promising. Um, it's the perfect environment, really, for a, a manager to come into. But they did have that tragedy at the beginning of the season. But even still, they're not in a bad place in the league. They're not doing too bad. Do you think that they made the right decision, second club, um, because you know results have been lacking, or do you think it was maybe I, a little bit too hasty? I can see where Leicester fans are coming from. Obviously, it was similar under Mourinho. The style of play is one that's affecting Leicester mm-hmm. fans in general. Um, obviously, his last game, they lost 4-1 to Palace. And he got well. Him slash the team got booed off the pitch. And as we, as you just said, they got some talented players, youngsters as well, people like Harvey Barnes, James Madison, and they still also got the quality of players like Jamie Vardy. So I think if you look at it in general, it's a good squad, and it's a, it's a squad that uh, with good footballers. And I think someone like Brendan Rodgers will, will suit the style of play that Leicester fans would want. And, and the players they have will also suit that style of play, I think, anyway. Well, you look at the style of play played at Swansea. Exactly, that's right. I tried mean. implementing that at Liverpool, which some, sometimes worked, sometimes didn't. But, yeah, he certainly likes to play good football. Um, but, I mean, going back to the, the question, like, you know, the main question, I know you said you understand where Leicester fans are coming from. If it was you, would you make the call? Would you have... If you were a Leicester fan... Because um, you're going to look at where they are in the league, you know. I think the problem is, Leicester won, when Leicester won the Premier League title, uh, it set expectations too high. So now, whenever you come ninth, tenth, which ordinarily would be quite a good position for a side that haven't been in the Premier League that long, you know, they only got promoted from the Championship, you know, five, six years ago. Um, now they're looking at that as a massive failure. failure. Do you think that's right? Do you think. So well, it's a massive failure. Like I said, they're four points off ninth now. And, um, but I think to them it is. I think they expect seventh place because, at the very you know, at the very least, because they did win the Premier League th- title like less than five years ago. I think they take tenth place or eleventh place if the football's good, if they can enjoy at least watching the team. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the main issue. The same level with United um, and like I said, and Mourinho, we we always struggled. To, it was the style of play that affected a lot of us. The way we were drawing, winning, losing games, it just didn't really enjoy us, didn't give us any enthusiasm for, for the matches, and I'm assuming it's the same for most Leicester fans, we just know someone like Rodgers who plays the right brand of football with the quality they have, youngsters, and obviously the experienced players they have, it'll just be perfect environment for him to sh- establish that style and become a dominant, I don't want to say a dominant force, obviously in English football, but dominant force in the mid-table of the yeah. Premier League of English football, so they could look at, that, look at someone like Wolves, someone like, obviously not Everton at the moment, but Everton well, are a team I look in to be like that, someone like Wolves, so they're trying to look for that seventh place or maybe even push for a Europa League spot in the future, mm. and as I said, maybe there are risen expectations because they won the league, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, because there's a, they, I wouldn't say less fans uh, would say they, like, just avoiding relegation is a good thing because it's not but obviously they want to get as high as they possibly can and I think they do have the team to do that if you look at this squad this squad is good enough to finish top 10 and I think that's the disappointment in the Leicester fans at the moment the style of play and obviously the results ain't going yeah. their way I do, think, I do think it must be frustrating because obviously they, they got into the Champions League following their title win um, and they did reasonably well they got to the knockout stages they knocked out Se- uh, Sevilla was it um, and then you know they, they spent a lot of money to try and keep this, this squad improving and, and strengthening they spent £30 million on Islam Slamani, 20 odd million on Adrian Silva, um, and it's just nothing's really happened. And like you said, they've got a, a very good uh, batch of young talent, like sort of Harvey Barnes and James Madison and Ben Chilwell. You need um, Tielemans as well now, obviously. Yeah, Tielemans, yeah, um, who potentially could be signed permanently at the end of the season. Um, yeah, the, the, you know, Hamza Chowdhury's played quite a lot this season as well. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, they, they, they're, they're wanting to get up the league table, but I just. It, but to me, it, I just I feel sorry for Claude Puel because I think he's had to deal with something this season that no one can possibly resonate with. No one can understand no. how tough. Well, the closest is Cardiff. You see, 
Plus well, but even, but even then, Emiliano Sala was never part of the club. Yeah. He hadn't even officially signed for them. Um, this man, Vichai, I don't know how to pronounce his surname, it's Vichai is his first name. Um, Vichai did so much to get that club where they were. They, he achieved the impossible dream, which will never be replicated. And he was meant to be this, this great figure that sort of took every player on his wing. I mean, Kasper Schmeichel, people see from his reaction how much he meant to him. Um, it's got to be, a, like, it's a job that no one wants that, to come in. Or not come in yeah. to be there, Easy. have that happen, and then somehow have to try and focus on the football when no one's heads on the football. He deserves a lot of credit for the way he handled the situation this season. Yeah. Quite well, I think he's he, wherever. If, if it were me, if I was a Leicester fan, I mean, if I was a Leicester fan, I would, I would have liked to have seen him stay, stay to the end of the season, and then go look, we're going to part ways because we don't think it's the right direction. Because. I know it's frustrating them not getting the results, but I just, I, it just seems incredibly harsh to me after all he's done. I um, think it is harsh, but results, like I said, they haven't, they haven't won in the last six, well, the last two months, well, including Puella, they have three managers when they went on a, a, a losing run of six Craig games. Uh, and Nadia Nadia Nadia. they both got the sack, so obviously it's, it's a f- similar thing that's happened to them too as well. Obviously it was, it was harsh sacking around Erie as well, obviously just won them in the Premier League. Yeah. And they still sacked him, so I think it is harsh. Uh, but whatever happens to Croke well now, we will come out of this with a massive amount of credit the way he handled the situation. You and imagine he'd get a job. He, yeah, because he, 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 he is a successful manager for the, that type of team in any league. With Slampton obviously, he, got, he, got, he finished eighth and got him to a cup final. So. It's just the, the only issue with, with club well is, is the brand of football, and yeah, it's which, not very really enjoyable yeah, as a which, fan. Which has always been the case. I mean, when he first took over at Leicester, I think Everton were the first team he played, um, and they played us for the park. We were fantastic, and you think, oh, Christ, maybe he's changed his style because it's Southampton. They would never play anything worth no. talking about, really. But I mean, yeah, has reverted back, and like you said, you would expect someone like Brendan Rodgers, who has probably got frustrated playing and uh, managing in Scotland. Uh, they're out the Champions League, out the Champions League, Europa League, out the Europa League now. So all they've got left to, to compete for is the SPL. And, I mean, I've seen people on Twitter say the fact that Brendan Rodgers has left Scott, uh, Celtic midway through the season when he could have won a league title shows how much of a joke the SPL is. Um, and without wanting to say directly that, yeah, he's right, the SPL, the SPL is a joke, it has a reputation for a reason. It's the, the competition is not all there. And Rodgers has gone there, broken records, done really well, uh, achieved so much in such a little space of time. He probably thinks that uh, Leicester is the perfect sort of environment to go to now. And also it's just a bigger challenge. It's a bigger yeah, challenge. I'm, Everyone I, wants that challenge to try and see what they can achieve um, with more resources, more attractiveness. You know, people would rather play in the Premier League than in, in Scotland. So you can't blame him for coming back. Yeah, I am a bit I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. I am a bit surprised that he's left midway through the season. Like you said, they're eight points clear at the top of the, of the SPL now. Probably going to win another league title. So it's a bit surprising he's, he's abandoning that yeah. trophy for the Premier League. But like I said, it's a, it's a good challenge. It's a good job to have with all the talents that's coming through that team, the club. Obviously, the experienced quality players got to school. People like Casper Schmeichel, Jamie Vardy, the experienced Harry Maguire, Johnny Evans. They got experience and quality there. Yeah. Plus the youngsters with a bit of exuberance like Dem- Demari Gray, uh, Harvey Barnes, James Barnes, and all that type of quality as well. It's just and your retailer ends. It just leads up to a good challenge for him and something that he thinks he can achieve something with Leicester City. I, I understand the viewpoint, but for me, I, I feel that, you know, Leicester, if they have, like we said, Leicester are an attractive prospect, so they can attract a number of managers. And Rogers might think, well, literally, I've got nothing that's going to keep me in, in Scotland, other than this one title, which I've already won two, three times now, um, with ease. Um, that opportunity, if I say no, if I say, ah, oh, yeah, I'll come to you in the summer, they might give some, give the job to someone else. So he might think, right, well, this is the best opportunity I'm going to get yeah. for a, a pretty good job. Like, it's a pretty good job to take. He's probably thought, I'll, I'll go for it. Like, there's nothing holding me back. I, I, I want to do it now. Um, I mean, I, I can't imagine what it's like to be at Celtic. I don't want to say Celtic managers. I don't want to say being a Celtic manager is a boring job. Celtic fans are a passionate fan base, and it's a massive club, but... I mean, without Rangers, it you know, it's still, without Rangers having got to the point they were at before they uh, dissolved, it's, it's still not com- competition. It, it, I, it, I can't imagine watching it. I mean, Celtic fans must love it, but I, I just I can't resonate. So, um, and then obviously Neil Lennon looks like the man who's going to take over at Celtic until the end of the season. The, the last man, obviously involved in this manager situation. Obviously, he was up in charge of Celtic four years from 2010 to 2014. So he knows the club. By Hibernian, was it? Yeah, well, yeah. I'm not sure. There was a bit of a strange oh, reason why he got sacked there, but it is what it is. Also, he knows Celtic and Sayonara, played there for a number of years, managed there for a number of years. He's also. You imagine the fans would be fairly happy to take him back to the end. Yeah, he should be able to see out the rest of the season for another league title for the club, and then 
obviously depends what, what happens going forward if they want to keep Neil Lennon on again as they have before or go somewhere new. But obviously he was linked with a Leicester job as well on interim at the end of the season. So I, it would have been could have been the opposite. Brendan Rodgers could have mm-hmm. stayed and then switched to the end of the year. I think it's a good move for Neil Lennon because um, he left Celtic to, was it Bolton he went to? Yeah. Um, and it didn't really work and he, and he went back to Scotland and never really got a top job. Um, so his career... You know, it looked like it was going one way at Celtic, winning all he did, um, and then it kind of did a bit of a nosedive. So it could be a good opportunity whether he stays beyond the sea, uh, beyond you know the next six months, or or he just does that so that short term tenure it gives him a chance to try and rebuild a little bit of his credibility um, and and get his face known because you know he he, he was quite well publicised. You know, he's quite outspoken as Celtic manager. He's in a lot of the papers, and in recent times he hasn't really been as prominent. So maybe he can ch- try and establish himself again. Yeah. That was all. That was all. Really. We just thought, you know, uh, with, with the whole Leicester situation, it was worth talking about. Uh, there was a story there, and I mean, it's quite current, so it would be a miss from a, a miss of us to just let it go. So, yeah, uh, Leicester fans, just let us know what you think in the comment section down below, or obviously on our social media, or especially on Twitter, where we like to obviously interact with our followers. Just let yeah. us know. Let us know what you think about these uh, these quick um, like. Videos. takes these quick stories because I mean we love the podcast that's the main thing we want to do but we're also looking to do more content so if there's anything you have an idea that we should do or you'd, re- you'd like to see or you just like this format of us doing little clips and little stories here and there to supplement the uh, the, ma- the main show then let us know because we can do more of that yeah that's pretty much nailed on the end to be fair mm-hmm. just, so let us know anything you want us to do um, so yeah just like this video make sure you subscribe if you're new because we do really really want to get to 100 subscribers so try and push us there That's it, yeah. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.